Welcome to Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting. Beginning Playwriting, Lesson 1.1, How to Begin a Play. Playwriting is different from other forms of writing because your audience does not read the words that you write. The audience instead will be watching actors perform your play. The actors will want the audience's attention riveted to the stage for the entire length of the play. It is the job of the playwright to create a script that will enable them to do this. When you write your script, you are writing not just the words that the actors will say, but all of the elements that will engage your audience. The play begins when the lights come up, so scripts begin lights up on. In olden days, plays began when the curtain rose. When you read older plays, you see them begin at rise, meaning at the rise of the curtain. But nowadays, even in theaters that still have curtains, the play begins when the lights come up on the stage. Lights up on a place. Remember that you are writing for the stage so the elements representing your setting will need to fit in the space. It is best to choose each of the elements of your play to help you engage the audience's attention. When you choose where to set your play, choose a place that lends more drama to your story, some place bigger than life and out of balance, rather than some place ordinary and static. The deck of a sinking ship, a decrepit mansion, a lost gold mine. Many books on playwriting say that the play begins when a character is on stage or comes on stage doing something. Let's think about this. Let's have the lights come up on an alley and a man is on stage. What he is doing is sleeping. I think we can agree that this play has not really started, or if it has started, then it's a terrible beginning. The fact is that it takes one more element to set the story into motion. Something is about to happen. Lights up on an alley. Mr. Bones is on stage asleep. Enter Tracy, running. She ducks into the alley and hides and looks around for a weapon. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen is the means by which you seize the audience's attention. You will hold on to it as long as what is about to happen has significant consequences for the characters. When something is about to happen that has significant consequences, it creates tension in the character. If the playwright creates a situation where Tracy is being chased by a man she met at a party, then when she ducks into that alley, she will carry the tension on her body that says, I am being hunted. The audience will know she is being hunted and that she is worried without Tracy saying a word to explain herself. Body language is the true language that actors use to communicate with the audience. Actors take the tension of the situation that the playwright devises and wear it on their bodies in interesting ways. As long as the events of the play have significant consequences, the tension of those events will be visible on the actors. And this is what intrigues and sustains audience interest. You need to create a significant tension level right from the beginning of the play. Lights up in the woods at night. Left of center is a large tree. Karen enters, carrying a flashlight and a shovel. She shines it on the big tree, then goes to it, consults a compass, and counts off six paces toward the audience. She begins to dig. Ask yourself, does this play intrigue you? Would you be looking at the stage, or would you be looking at your program? The playwright's job is to hold the attention of the entire audience on the stage for the whole of the play. If you don't think that this beginning would hold the attention of everyone you know, then adjust the tension level. Make the stakes higher. Make the consequences to the characters greater. Lights up on the woods at night. Enter Karen. She is dragging a body. She chooses a spot and begins to dig. The story of a play needs to be sustained for minutes, if not hours. So choose a setting where the action can continue for a long time without changing the time or place and choose a tension level that you can sustain for a long time. Once you set a tension level at the beginning of your play, you can keep it the same or you can raise it, but you must not lower it. If you lower it, the audience will lose a little of their interest. Some of them will look away and move around. Your actors hate that. Don't do that to them. So don't start your play with too high a tension level, because it's very difficult to keep that going. The tension level created by the circumstances on stage is subjective. You will need to figure out for yourself how much tension it would take to focus your attention on the stage. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, 
one being the least and ten being the most. Rate the tension of the following play beginnings. Lights up on the kitchen of an apartment. Lily is on stage looking through the drawers. Enter Ken. Lily, I can't find my two cup measure. Have you seen it? Ken, no. Do we have any beer? For me, the tension in this play beginning is zero or one. This is not a very good play beginning. Lights up on the kitchen of an apartment. The apartment has been wrecked. Lily enters with a bag of groceries. Lily. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ken! This has better tension. On a scale of one to ten, the tension for me is about five or six. Notice that when there is significant tension on the stage, the characters will not normally engage in pleasantries. If your dialogue includes, Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Won't you please sit down? Unless it's a mobster speaking ironically to his prisoner, you don't have any tension on the stage. And remember, you must always, every moment, have significant tension on the stage. Here's another. Lights up on a kitchen. Ken stands at the window looking out. Lily is at the table, cleaning and loading a stack of rifles and handguns. Ken. Lily. They're back. If Ken has seen the neighbors coming back for the coats they left behind, then his body will be relaxed. You will be able to tell that he is not expecting any problem. But if Ken is looking out the window for the return of the attacking zombies, then when the lights come up, the tension of the zombie attack will be visible on his body. Before he even opens his mouth, the audience will know that there is a big problem on stage. Lily, preparing all those weapons, defines the problem more clearly. The tension on stage is seven or eight, and that's great, except that sustaining that high attention level can be a challenge. The circumstances of the story will be reflected in all the details on the stage, the kind of weapons being loaded, the way Ken stands at the window, the speed at which Lily is loading the weapons. When you have tension on the stage, you have all these ways of telling the story before the actors ever say a word. If your play beginning has a tension level of zero or one or two, then there are a bunch of people in the audience who are not yet interested. Since audience members have all paid the same ticket price, the play needs to work for everyone right from the start. Here are a couple more play beginnings. What is the tension level of each of them for you? Lights up on a large room in an old mansion. Enter Miss Kettle, dressed in Sunday clothes. Miss Kettle. Hello? Hello? What is the tension level at this moment? For me, it's about a two or three. Miss Kettle may be interesting, and the setting is intriguing, but there is no problem on the stage or any significant consequences in view. One of the easiest ways to raise the tension level is to hurt the character. Lights up on a large room in an old mansion. Miss Kettle, dressed in Sunday clothes, is sprawled on the floor nursing her ankle. Miss Kettle. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? For me, the tension of this play beginning is now at five or six. There is a significant life-changing problem on the stage. The next person to come in should add to the tension on stage, not diminish it. For example, if Chance enters and says, Chance, Miss Kettle, here you are. Thank goodness I found you. Then the problem on stage has begun to be resolved. However, if Chance enters carrying a battle axe, then the problem has been compounded. Then the problem on stage has begun to be resolved. However, if Chance enters carrying a battle axe, then the problem has been compounded. An excellent playwright can create significant tension on stage without adding weapons to the mix. But if you need to, remember you can always add a battle axe. So check me on this and see if we agree. If the lights come up on a room where a woman is reading a book in a chair, then that is a tension level of zero. If she is dressed outrageously, okay, that's more interesting, that's a one or two. If the lights come up on a person packing up some boxes, that's about a two. If she is wrapping each item like it's important, if she picks up a picture and starts to cry, then that's a three or four. Something significant is happening on the stage. The audience will be able to read the tension of the moment on the body of the actor. So you see, the playwright does not write primarily with the words the characters say. We use the words to create tension which the actors wear on their bodies. That is how we tell the story. But if you do not give your actor any tension, then there is no story to tell. They'll just be walking and talking. If the lights come up on a man tied to a chair, then you have a significant tension level. 
If he's just sitting there, it's still a six. If he's scared or excited or dying, then it's seven or eight. If you have a couple sitting at a table having dinner, then your tension level is one or two. If we see one of them poison the food, or we know one of them is a vampire, then the tension level is five or six, because something life-changing is about to happen. Here is the exercise for this lesson. Think up three or four play beginnings of your own. Think about what the tension level is in each of them. Remember that there has to be a significant tension level to seize and hold the attention of the audience right from the start. There has to be enough tension so that the actors have something to play. Think up a setting and one or two characters. Write, lights up on, whatever the place is. So-and-so is on stage, or comes on stage, doing something. Make this action as strongly interesting as you can so that anyone will be engaged watching it. Then, bring the problem onto the stage, usually by adding another character. What you don't want is something like this. Lights up on a living room. The doorbell rings. Connie goes to answer it. Connie, just a minute. Enter James. James, hi, Connie. Connie, James, so good to see you. I'm so glad you came. Let me take your coat. Would you like some coffee? I just made a fresh pot. As written, there is no tension level on the stage in this play beginning. You could create tension by beginning with Connie poisoning a pot of coffee, or if Connie is blind, and this is not James, or some other circumstance that seizes our attention and intrigues us. If you find your characters saying hello to each other and offering each other beverages, examine the tension level and make sure something significant is going on so that the audience's attention is still held. If, when you think of a play beginning, you find yourself grinning as you think about it, then it's probably a good one. If you find yourself compelled to continue writing after the first few lines, that's a good sign, too. Have fun. The more fun for you, the more fun for your audience. The beginning of a play should seize and hold the audience's attention right from the time the lights come up. The playwright does this by creating significant tension on the stage right from the start. You can tell if there is tension on the stage because the actors will take that tension onto their bodies. This concludes Lesson 1.1, How to Begin a Play. I hope you find it useful. The next element of beginning playwriting is about basic character development and writing theatrical dialogue. We'll talk about that in Lesson 1.2. If you would like more information on playwriting, my manual, Playwriting, The Merciless Craft, Comprehensive Techniques for Mastering Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting is available from Amazon as both an ebook or a paperback. If you have questions or comments, or are interested in a workshop or master's class, you can contact me through my website at thecarolwolf.com.